if we look at the most prevalent theory on why hair turns gray, it has to do with your body's ability to produce certain types of pigments. If we blow up on this image, you can kind of see a chemical breakdown of these two substances and how they're produced. These are the melanin-based pigments. So eumelanin and pheomelanin are the two pigment types that we produce in our cells, in our uh, hair follicles, that give color to our hair. So eumelanin is more of the dark pigmentin, or brown and black coloration, and then pheomelanin is more of the, if you've got blonde hair or strawberry blonde or red hair, you're gonna produce more of this type of pigment. But both of these pigments start from this very, very critical amino acid called tyrosine. So tyrosine is an amino acid that comes from the food that we eat in our diet. It's predominantly found in protein-rich foods. And we'll dive more into the chemistry of this because nutritionally, this is super important. There are a lot of nutrients that aren't listed on this diagram that play a critical role in how tyrosine ends up as one of these two types of pigments. But this is how hair pigmentation occurs. Now that you have a general understanding of that, let's talk a little bit about what happens that causes discoloration or premature graying of the hair. So blowing it up on this image, this is the most prevalent and comprehensive theory on why we think hair turns gray. And it has to do with a few different things. One, it has to do with the stem cells, the melanocyte stem cells, these are specialized cells uh, that actually help us to, um, to produce melanocytes, which are the cells that make the pigment. And so what scientists believe happens here is that we get forms of oxidative stress. You can see the three prevailing reasons why this happens. Number one down here, oxidative stress does damage to these little, you see these little black dots down here, these are melanocytes. So oxidative stress does damage to melanocytes. Now there's a lot of ways we can develop oxidative stress. Think of oxidative stress as you being exposed to environmental chemicals, pollutants, pollutants or chemicals in your food um, are potential possibilities. Overexposure to UV, and I don't mean getting normal regular sunshine, I mean going at sunshine, I mean going out and getting sunburned. So the, 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 the severe oxidative damage that can happen from skin burning, not from sunshine exposure. So it's the oxidative stress that damages the melanocytes. Then we can have genotoxic stress that damages melanocyte stem cells, which are, is right here in the hair follicle. You can see this, I've highlighted these little yellow structures. Those are stem cells that go on to make melanocytes, and so genotoxic stress can damage those. And there are a number of different things that can cause genotoxic stress as well. The same types of things, the chemicals in our environment, the chemicals we're being exposed to in our foods, etc. And then we have oxidative or genotoxic stress that can actually affect the hair itself. So you can see in this shaft, this is the hair follicle. And this dark structure coming out of the follicle, that's the shaft of the hair. And so you can have damage to the hair itself, damage to the stem cells that produce melanocytes, or you can have damage to the actual melanocytes themselves. All of these damages are oxidative in nature. And so let's have a deeper conversation about what that really means and what that looks like. Because if you understand this, you're gonna understand how to protect your hair from prematurely graying. And, and a lot of the strategies that we're gonna talk about are gonna make so much better sense. So what we're looking at here is the antioxidant systems within the human body that help to prevent that oxidation that we were just talking about. And as it relates to um, hair, we've got Oxidative stress creates what are, what are known as superoxide anions. These are, okay, so let's just stop talking about the chemistry part. Just think of this as a free radical. If we wanna really simplify it, you've all probably heard the term free radical. And free radicals are these little charged particles that can go around in our body and do damage. This is why we talk, you, you constantly hear about in the anti-aging um, in the anti-aging media, you hear about free radicals and antioxidants, right? The two opposing diametric opposing forces that combat each other. So too many free radicals can cause oxidative damage. 
and not enough antioxidants will prevent your body from getting rid of free radicals. So the, the name of the game is it's, it's normal to produce free radicals. That's a normal part of human physiology. But it's also normal that we have good antioxidants, so these two balance each other out. But when you have too many free radicals, this is where the oxidative damage comes in. So too many free radicals equal, equals oxidative damage. So if you just kind of understand that at its simplest level, then you'll, you'll understand what we're, what we're about to say. So you'll notice there are these pathways here, very chemically oriented, but SOD is one of them. SOD is an antioxidant enzyme. It's, it's sometimes referred to as superoxide dismutase, so, but it's an antioxidant enzyme system. And what's important to understand here is that in order for this system to work, in other words, this system helps to get rid of free radicals. In order for this system to work, that requires copper, and it requires zinc, and it requires another mineral called manganese. So these three minerals serve as almost like the keys that start the motor of this enzyme and allow it to get rid of free radicals. So SOD is a very important component. So this is one of the most important components as it relates to getting rid of free radicals. Then we also have, if you look over here, we have this GSHPX system. This is glutathione. Many of you have heard of glutathione, the master antioxidant of the body. It's what the liver uses to take out the trash. But glutathione also, the glutathione system, this is glutathione peroxidase, uh, helps us to, again, break down free radicals to prevent them from damaging our tissue. So think of, think of SOD as number one, think of glutathione here as number two, and then think of this third one here as number three. This is catalase. And catalase is an enzyme system that will, that will further break down antioxidants into water and oxygen. And so these three systems work together to quench free radicals from creating what I showed you here in the hair follicle itself, from, from creating an excessive amount of oxidative damage, okay, to the structures that help you pigment your hair follicles. And so if you have excessive antioxidant or excessive free radicals and not adequate antioxidant function, you're going to be more susceptible to graying of your hair, no matter what your age. And this is going to make better sense. We'll talk, we'll talk in more depth here in just a minute about some of these other things. But I want to show you just some of the, what the researchers are saying about this. So, and you can see here, one of the most visible signs of hair aging is graying of the hair, also known as Kennedy's. This, this hair disorder is mainly caused by oxidative stress. So again, free radical production, accumulation of reactive oxygen species, in essence, accumulation of free radicals, uh, and a decrease in the presence of melanocytes and melanoblasts resulting in a decrease in hair pigmentation. This was a study done in 44 male volunteers with gray hair. After four months, we evidenced a reduction in the proportion of gray hair and in the number of gray hairs relative to day zero. In conclusion, we clearly evidence that oxidative stress is a key factor in triggering cas cascade of events leading to loss of hair pigmentation. So again, what's causing the premature graying? It's oxidative stress, free radicals. Let's look at some more research on this. You can see here, System, a systemic redox imbalance, so let's make sense of that, of these terms. Redox stands for reduction oxidation. This is just the system in your body that helps you get rid of free radicals. And so when you have an imbalance in the redox system, that means you can't get rid of free radicals effectively. So when we say a systemic redox imbalance, it means you're not capable of breaking down free radicals as effectively as you otherwise should be. So. This study, a systemic redox imbalance was present, meaning these people could not get rid of their free radicals in premature candidates. This is premature graying of the hair. Patients in our study cohort, due to raised pro-oxidant levels, in other words, they had too many oxidative, oxidative chemicals, and reduced antioxidant prowess as evidenced by significantly higher serum MDA. This MDA, this is a blood test that your doctor can measure on you. 
um, if you're wondering, this is one of those tests you can request, and it's a marker in the blood of a inability to break down free radicals. And in essence, it's a risk factor as well, not just for graying of the hair, but it's a risk factor for other chronic diseases because too much MDA is a sign of damage and that your body's not able to, to process that damage. So if you come down here, our study makes a strong case for therapeutic supplementation with antioxidants in patients with premature canidities. And you, you can see here, this is glutathione, this is SOD. What were we just talking about a moment ago? We were talking about these, these patients in this study had low glutathione and low SOD, therefore they couldn't break this chemical down that's a free radical and that free radical causes damage. So going back to this diagram, you can see here, that's the SOD, that's the glutathione peroxidase. So I know this is, there's a lot of technical chemistry involved here, but if we're, again, just simplifying it, if you can't get rid of the free radicals that your body is naturally going to produce by being exposed to the environment, then your hair follicles will take on damage and your hair pigmentation will go away sooner rather than later. So next, I want to I wanna show you, kind of give you a breakdown on something we're going to be talking quite a, quite a lot about tonight. And that is, as I mentioned earlier, I mentioned tyrosine. And it said that tyrosine was an important factor in your body's ability to produce the pigments, eumelanin and pheomelanin. Remember, tyrosine produces these two chemicals that allow your hair to get pigmentation. And so if we look at the biochemistry of tyrosine, as you see in this diagram, uh, tyrosine is an amino acid. Again, it comes from protein. So if you eat adequate protein, and we'll talk more about this shortly, if you eat adequate protein, you're, gonna get ad you're most likely going to get ad adequate tyrosine. Phenylalanine is also an amino acid. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid that if you, if you, you also get from protein, but if you eat enough of this one or this one, then you're going to have the ability um, to get to dopamine, DOPA specifically, which if we, again, if we go back here, you see here, tyrosine has to produce DOPA so that these other reactions can occur. You see all these other different chemicals that have to be produced to get to eumelanin. This all stems from tyrosine and DOPA. So important that you understand the nutrition relationships here. So for us to get phenylalanine and turn it into tyrosine, one, we have to make sure we eat enough protein. But what I want to, pay, want, want to show you here is that in order to convert that phenylalanine into tyrosine, that requires vitamin B3, which is NAD, also known as vitamin B3. It requires iron. It requires folate, which is vitamin B9, and BH4, which is, a, which is a, a branch off of folate or subtype of folate. To get from tyrosine to L-DOPA also requires vitamin B3, iron, folate, BH4, so same things, plus vitamin D, as well as omega-3. So these nutrients are all super important for your body to be able to convert the amino acids into DOPA, which then goes on to produce the pigments of our hair. 